welcome back to another trading card video. This time we're at it with the fantasy art of David Mattingly. And if you don't know what fantasy art is, it's just essentially like fantasy art, you know, like random shit. And it's like a fantasy setting, you know, it could be vampires, zombies, dragons, fucking, uh, as you can see, centaurs, cavemen. You know, like, th these came out, like, in a time, like, uh, years ago when they would, uh, like, a lot of people were making, you know, like, um, yeah, 1995, you know, 1980s, like, the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was, like, real big on fantasy and shit, you know? And, like, can we just take a moment, though, to look at this beautiful-ass art? Like, that centaur looks badass as fuck. I'm gonna be honest with you. But I broke these into two halves because this is the complete set of 90 cards. And, um, I thought it would be easier to, uh, just kind of look at it like this, you know? Like, break them in half and look at it like that. So, starting off with the first one, we had a wizard on a subway car. I actually like that, though. That's badass as hell. I love his little fucking wizard robe. Fuck, I love wizards. I ain't gonna lie to you. Wizards are fucking awesome. And here's the back, if y'all want to read that. The, uh, it, it was literally called the Subway Wizard Jesus. I have lived right outside of New York for the last 10 years, and I, I love Manhattan. I ride the subway often as the inspiration for this scene. It includes a portrait of me, my mother, my wife, and and an ad for my wife's book, The Names of All Our Cats. It won the Association of Science Fiction Artists Award. Best cover 1991. Shit. So where's the... Uh... Shit. Oh, I'm guessing up there, right? That's pretty cool, shit. Yeah, not a lot of people do shit like that, you know? So let's see here. We have a vampire. No, is that an angel? No. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh. I want those look like like a, they, those look like vampire wings. So I'm gonna say that's a vampire. And then he's being stalked by uh, this guy with a dagger and a mask. Bro, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I wish we still wore outfits like this. Like the fucking the drip on that dude is fucking awesome. Like, that's some hella drip. But here's the back. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna read every one of them, but fucking. Uh, I have an, a, yeah, a collection of costumes in a big studio closet. Cape, spacesuit, lots of helmets, monster masks, alien tunics, jewelry, a lot of, you know, weapons, ray guns, all that shit. His collection just keeps growing, hell yeah. Hey, it's the space wizard, I mean the subway wizard again, kind of. I mean, it looks like him in a way. Dude, that's badass though. See, honestly, if we still wore outfits like this, I deadass would be wearing a wizard robe. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, no, actually, no. I want to go. I want to go to one of the Renaissance Fair things that they, that they have across the countries and shit. And if I do, I'm gonna wear a. Uh, I want to be like an assassin. So I'm gonna have like a black robe with like fucking uh, purple coming down the sides and shit. And then I have like a little you know sword or a dagger or some shit. But that's what I would do. I'd be like a fucking an assassin <laughs> in a fantasy realm. I would definitely be like some type of either assassin or like. Uh, like a wizard or a knight or some shit. So this this doesn't really have a particular theme or a story. This is just like shit he has drawn. Which I fucking love, honestly. This is probably the most popular painting I have ever done. At science fiction conventions, this is the piece I'm asked most often about. Oh. Here is... Damn, that's kind of cool. Fucking space people with ray guns and fucking helmets and... Damn, look at that city in the background. Honestly, I want to paint some shit like this. Honestly, hell, I mean, that'd be badass as hell. This is a classic book by Lester Del Rey. I was lucky enough to know Lester before he died, and he was one of the finest critiquers of painting I have known. He had an encyclopedic knowledge of a stunning array of subjects. Oh, that's awesome, hell. Dude, I love this one. Look at the, look at the fucking souls in the sky and shit. That's badass as fuck. I, I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. That's awesome as hell. Fucking, I love the little wizard on there. <laughs> I painted all the demons flying up from behind the wizard freehand with a fine airbrush, blocking it in. Yeah, blocking it in randomly at first and then popping it 
interesting shapes as I went along. Okay, okay, shit. And he's kind of telling us how he did them and shit. I like that, actually. I love when they uh, the trading cards like this do this. Hell, I love fantasy cards in general, like, where they've painted the shit and, like, uh, it's, like, their own uh, art and shit. Like, I fucking... Like, me personally, I don't know if y'all do or not, but I fucking love art like that. Like, I love trading cards like that. Like, I got, um... I got six more. Like, uh, I have... I was able to get six of these in total, and it's, like, all different fantasy people. Like, different people from different, like, ones like Hellbent or some shit. Like, Hellbent 1 and Hellbent 2. Um... The art of someone else. Uh, some cards called Olivia or some shit. And then like another set as well. But fucking, I love like I don't know what it is. I just I just fucking love fantasy trading cards. Like like look at look how weird this shit is. Like you see like it's like a fucking alien with a fucking cape and a dagger. You're stabbing whoever the hell uh, you know the other alien. Look at the little castle. Like I, I fucking love fantasy art like that. I mean, part of uh, that might just come from the fact that I like uh like I, I fucking love Dungeons and Dragons. Like fucking. Like, making your own little character and shit like that. I, I fucking love it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, games on, like, PlayStation and Xbox and shit. I love games like that as well. Where you can fucking pick your shit, you know? I did this painting early in my career using a technique I have since abandoned. I underpainted it in browns and then applied transparent glazes over the top to get its final color. Oh. That's pretty cool. Check that fucking spaceship out. <laughs> fucking love that, dude. Look how nice that shit looks. Fucking, I don't know, man. It's just something about fantasy cards. I just fucking love them. And fucking, I, f I grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado, or FT Collins, Colorado. Is that Fort? I don't know. Which was a small town then. I originally thought I would become a comic book artist, but as I grew older, I found the challenge of doing a single realistically rendered image more in keeping with my talents. Hell yeah, that's awesome. So the things on the back, are they like... Like, sub-paintings, or is it the paintings, or... I actually have no fucking clue. I want to say the cards are the painting, but, like, I actually don't know. But this one's fucking cool looking. A green emerald. Look at the fucking creepy-ass cat. I don't know how I'd feel about a cat with, like... Like, look, dude, that cat has human fingers. I, I, I don't know, man. I'd have to punch that cat in the face. <laughs> Well, I don't know, hell, I mean, in a setting like this, I assume this is probably normal. This is probably like a forest creature or some shit, so fucking, I'm, I'm assuming that would be normal, but fucking even then, man, like, if I saw that in real life, I'm punching that shit in the face. Well, no, actually, I'd probably shake its hand and talk to it, honestly, because I'm fucking weird. And I love cats, I mean, as y'all know, hell, you hear my cats every so often in the videos and shit, and fucking, like, I love cats, and fucking, <laughs> I don't know, it's just something, that this cat just looks fucking creepy, though. I love the two little fucking people transcending, like, their souls and shit. I love that in the background. That little fucking detail is awesome. Best teacher I ever had was Baron Story at Art Center College of Design. Uh, you get the assignment and plan to make it the best you've ever done. You get into the project. You finish a project as best you can. There you go. That is true. Here we have the Council of Wizards. We have Dark Green Wizard with Light Green Wizard. Purple wizard and blue wizard. Okay, okay, okay. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Damn, that, that's the earth, isn't it? That's pretty cool looking shit. The wizard convention. A lot of illustrators use the same sort of look alike, beautiful models all the time. Whenever possible, I like to show humanity in all its rich incarnations. Fat, skinny, short, tall, and we with weird facial hair and even bald. Oh, that's awesome. Hell yeah, I love fucking people that do that shit who include every fucking body. That shit's awesome to me. Holy shit, I just realized I've only shown off like nine fucking cards. It's been about ten fucking minutes. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't even realize that. Fuck. But let's see here. I love this one. Ooh, look at that. Oh, the spotlight's hitting the cat, but the cat's a fucking... A human who's a detective, but he's fucking... He's a he's a cat detective. Oh, look at that. I didn't even notice that at first. There's a fucking hand in a trash can. Oh my god, dude. That's fucking awesome. Let's see here. Futuristic looking. Look at the fucking flying cars. Like, I, I'm telling you, man. This, this kind of art, to me, is just fucking nice. Like, th th this is the shit that I, I, I fucking love, you know? I love trading cards like this. 
I love art like this, honestly. All right, let's see here. I have put inside jokes in my paintings, and this is this one probably has more than any one other, more than any other. I'll, I'll point, I'll point out three of the posters are for Barclay and the Househeads, a joke for Illustrator Barclay Shaw, or Barclay uh, Barclay Shaw. BDM plus C CBC are my and my wife's initials. One of Arthur Simon Hawke's other books is in the garbage. Wait, what, really? Oh, shit. I can't see that, but that's fucking cool. I bet you if I zoomed in and, like, looked hard enough, I could find that shit, but fucking... <laughs> Check that out. You have a, a little wizard kind of guy... Hold up. I don't even care about the people kissing anymore. Look at that shit. That motherfucker's on a surfboard in the fucking distance. That motherfucker's having a time of his life. I don't give a fuck. That is fucking cool as hell. That's fucking awesome, bro. Okay, but we have a man and a woman. And then you have a little boy chasing a cat through a fucking Doctor Strange portal. <laughs> but, bro, look at that shit. He's back there having a the time of his fucking life, dude. I love that this dude has. I love that he threw cats into his shit. I fucking love cats. The painting was my chance to do a takeoff of on romance covers. While I don't personally read romance novels, I appreciate a lot of the beautiful covers. It took courage by the art director at Berkeley Books to go with this idea because it had the potential of confusing the fantasy buyer. Hell yeah. We'll check that cat out. Oh, it's the little boy from the last one. That's a different cat, but that's definitely the same boy. Look, he has the fucking orange and green stripes and the red little thing. Oh, there's that cat. Okay, hell yeah. Oh, that's badass. So this is a different cat, but fucking, I like that. That I like that. that I like that it continued. My my wife and I are cat lovers, and we owned anywhere from three to eight at one time. I love to paint them, but only, but the only cat I love to, I have had who liked to pose, Orison, is now dead. And the three now ruling the roost are completely uncooperative. <laughs> I usually end up making up the felines in my painting in spite of a house full of cats. Okay, okay. So here we have a fucking monster locker room. You see a werewolf, a dragon, uh, what is that, goblins? Yeah, goblins, some type of hairy creature, and a fucking laguna creature. I fucking love that, though. That's awesome. I know that I am capable of doing funny paintings, but I am generally thought of for the comic genre. That's why I, I was extremely pleased when I got assigned this extravagantly wacky book by Esther Frensner. I'm, I, I can't pronounce names for shit. <laughs> Reading her books can make me laugh out loud, and I hope I can communicate that in my paintings. Okay, okay. Ooh, this is a pretty cool looking one. Them dogs look weird. Oh, I guess that's the purpose of it is to look weird as hell. Look at this shit. You have this freaky ass motherfucker up here. This freakier motherfucker right here. The dogs are extremely fucking freaky as hell looking. And then you have that motherfucker back there holding his hand against the door and shit. I, I like that though. I mean, it, it, like, I'm pretty sure this is probably trying to give off like a fucking creepy factor, you know? This cover is for a book by uh, Jonathan Carroll and it is one of the finest pieces of writing I have ever had a chance to illustrate. It starts out as a happy fantasy, but midway through the narrative turns very dark, which is the explains the creepy people. Yep, mm-hmm. I foreshadow this with a dim, sinister figure in the door window. The dogs are a tip to the hat to my favorite cartoonist, George Booth. Okay, okay, so I was right. It's, it turns creepy, okay. That's awesome, hell yeah, I'm glad. Well, I'm not glad that it turns creepy, but... You know, I'm glad he... I was able to get the point he was trying to get, you know. So here it looks like we have a... Space strip club or a space club and then you have the dancers up there kind of like how some dance clubs have the dancers they'll be up, up up top and you like you know it's not strippers or nothing they just have them up top I did this cover for one of the most fascinating fir first novels by a science fiction writer I have ever read one of the action a lot of the action takes place in a wild futuristic bar where you indicate your erotic preference by the color of the scarf worn around your neck I couldn't resist featuring that scene as a cover. You wear a scarf around your neck. Oh, red, white. Okay, okay. I don't know what the colors mean, but okay, I get you. Now, check this shit out. Look at this shit. 
That's a dope-ass spaceship, okay? Look at that shit. I don't know if it's beaming somebody up or if it's destroying that fucking city, but you have old boy, old boy and old boy fucking flying the fuck away. They're getting the fuck out of Dodge. Unless that, unless they live in the city, but fuck it, I don't know. Paint, this painting was done in my spare time when I was working with, I was working as a matte artist at Walt Disney Studio. Oh, that's fucking cool. He worked at Walt Disney. Okay. I spent four years there, eventually becoming the youngest department head in the history of the studio. I was lucky enough to have Harrison Ellenshaw as a teacher and mentor. I owe a lot to him. Okay, okay, shit. This guy, why does this remind me of Space Jam? <laughs> I like that, though. Fucking, look at that shit. You have, like, a fucking creepy-ass alien playing some basketball. I like that, though. That's awesome. Surely this is a moment for all wit for which all men hope not only do we discover that we are not alone in the universe but also that aliens are good at sports <laughs> damn this looks cool as fuck is this like some type of uh, detective kind of thing he may be I don't know hell but fucking whoever's in this car is chasing him down and he got to gun so I don't know hell fucking damn I like that I like that he uses real people there. Like I think that's fucking awesome I think that's cool as hell, actually. The influence of comic book art can be seen on this cover. I haven't seen many book covers divided into sections that tell a narrative like this one. But I think by, yeah, I think this is the idea worth exploring further. I did a portrait of myself for the big head, so naturally this is my mother's favorite of my work. So this is what he looks like. Okay, that's cool as shit. I actually do like how that's set up, though. You got the big ass version in the background, and then you got the fucking you got him running for his fucking life. Like I like how that's actually set up. That's set up really fucking good, you know. Like I I, I do actually like how that's set up. But we got uh, the Crusades burning a a computer. Why are they burning a computer? Saint Joan and the computer. Yeah, I was right. Okay. I see this as a visualization of my love-hate relationship with the computer. I love what the computer can do for an artist, but there are more, but there are often technical concerns that get in the way of art. I would probably be working more and more on the computer, but it does get frustrating sometimes. Okay, okay. Check this out. You have like a Roman, a space Roman or some shit, or space gladiators. I'm gonna call them fighting one of the fucking blue little fucking creatures. That looks like is that a blue bat? I don't even know. It's cool as fuck though. I enjoy visiting artist studio because their work environment reveals a lot about them. My studio looks like this. I have the drawing board in the middle of the room surrounded by a table for reference and cabinets for art supplies. The edges of the room are ringed with shelves loaded with books, models, robots, and live action. That sounds like one hell of a fucking room. I would love to see that, honestly. That sounds like a fucking awesome ass room. Like, fucking, I, I don't know. It's just something about that kind of, like, I want a room like that. Like, I want to be able to have all my shit like that you know like because i do like to draw and paint i don't do it as often as i should but i do like to draw and i draw shit like this i draw like weird uh or actually like that little yellow thing that we saw on the porch i draw shit like that like just weird ass fucking figures and creatures and shit if i can i need to do it more often here we have what is this gladiators and or technically no this is what some type of some type of grease warrior with uh native american or yeah native americans running in the background and a big ass dinosaur lizard thing in the back and my man's just eating a hamburger and don't even give a fuck <laughs> he about to die like hell oof fucking that would be like that this painting for a book by sp somto has to has to uh, has to have been influenced by years of reading Mad Magazine, especially the work of Jack, yeah, Jack Davis. This is a classic Mad setup. Everyone is aware of the Mad Association except for the hero in the foreground. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love Mad. I ain't gonna lie. I hear... Why does it look like Tobey Maguire? <laughs> it's just really fucked up looking. But yeah, he just killed that guy. There's... What is that? Porn going on in the background? Jesus. They're all watching that shit intently, though. But fucking, it looks like he just killed this guy. This is a sort of storytelling cover that comic books often use. By storytelling, I mean that from the setup, you can speculate on what happened just before and what might happen a minute later. The model for the drunk laying cheek mashed down is the author of the Angel's Luck trilogy, Joe 
Fast. I, for a minute, I thought that shit was going to say Tobey Maguire. I was going to laugh like hell that it was Tobey Maguire. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have this guy running. He's he's on the, he's getting shot at. And he's, uh, he's on the camera though and shit. Okay, okay. I went to school at Art Center College of Design in California. One of the best things I got there is a strong grounding and perspective. I can handle very complex uh, perspectives. But for a maximum dramatic effect, a single point of perspective like this one that pulls the viewer right into the cons composition is hard to beat. You know, you're not wrong. Hell, fucking single points are actually kind of good. Fucking, oh, I, I see what he means by the different points. Like, you have, like, the, like, here. Like, that, that yeah, that's actually kind of hard to fucking do. I ain't gonna lie. Like, this would be, I guess, technically going up like this would be his, his original first single point. But he, yeah, you had to have... You would have had to turn this motherfucker a little bit like this to keep it up, like so you would know what way it was going. So then he had one going this way, then that one goes there. Damn, that's actually fucking. You got one up here. So yeah, he definitely had one like in the middle. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I love I love fucking perspectives like that, man. I ain't gonna lie, fucking doing shit like that is hard as fuck to do. Fucking, but yeah, we got this little guy touching God knows what, and the little fucking guy on the balcony like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> Angel's Luck, Precious Cargo. After I finished sketches of a, for a painting, I will sometimes go back and try to, try a scene I already have, I have already done from a very high or low angle. Top shots like this are very informative as to where people are in space, and they capture the viewer's attention because it's not our normal way of seeing, yeah? That is true. Alright, check this one out, hell yeah, fucking, I kind of like this one, I like this one, it's fucking creepy looking, but I like it. So here you have some type of space warriors and then like a little guy in the background and shit watching them and shit. That's pretty cool. That little fucking... When I get a chance to do my version of a classic science fiction series, I will often research what other artists have done with it so I can come up with a fresh angle. In my version of the Lensman series, I con I'm concentrating on the characters both human and alien in, big screen, in the big action scenes. Okay, okay. So here we have a brain... With a robot and two people uh, doing something to it, I'm not really sure what. Hey, check that out. He he he's still on the like his story continues. Hell yeah, okay. Uh, first lensman. Oh, hang on. As the lensman series proceeds, Doc, Doc Smith keeps increasing the size of the armored spacesuits until the wearers resemble metallic blimps. Oh. Here's him with a dragon, it looks like. I love how he's flying in the background and shit. <laughs> Ooh, hang on, wait a minute. Let's fucking read the back of this card. I just saw something that was fucking dope as shit. <laughs> Hold up, give me a minute. Oh my god, let's see here. This features Doc Smith's ventilation lensman. A dragon-like alien covered with scaly hind and sporting broad wings. Okay, that's cool, but this is cooler. <laughs> This is a fucking knight with a Tommy gun? Bro, that's badass as fuck. I, this is probably my favorite card. Oh my god, dude. Like, dude, I fucking love the shield. Like, look at that, dude. And, like, fucking he blends into the smoke. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Oh my god, I fucking love that. Oh, this is, okay, this is about to be my favorite little section right here, isn't it? Fucking no good idea from a painting ever goes to waste with me. If a strong idea is rejected for one project, I keep it in my files and submit a revised version when approached. When appropriate assignment comes up, I submitted this idea for a dropout. Solid colored background several times before it was chosen for this series. That's fucking awesome. And then this is a fucking, what, a cowboy jester? With a fucking lightsaber, bro? That's fucking cool as shit. Okay, I, I, I like that a lot, actually. Uh, the Timekeeper Conspiracy. The look of this cover with the shadows dropping out to the background was done before by James Bama on his Doc Savage series. I thought it was especially appropriate for this series by Simon Hawk about futuristic soldiers that go back in time to fight their wars. That's badass. I, I, some of these I need to fucking read, honestly. But check this one out. You have uh, Space Gladiators with Spaceships. <laughs> okay, I love Space Gladiators. I talk about other artists a lot, but then in these commentaries, but looking at paintings by ancient and modern masters gives me a lot of happiness. Okay, okay, okay. So now you have someone scuba diving with eyeballs looking at him and shit. 
That's fucking cool as shit, too. Hell, fucking... Ooh, we're, we got to the cover. I tend to be critical of my own work, and often what I see when I look at my paintings are the unsolved problems. This painting for a book by Robert Chase and his exception. Little brother... Little bothers me. It is uncompleted composition, but sometimes the simplest solutions are the most satisfying. Okay, okay. So here we have the cover of the cards, which is awesome as shit. So let's just, like, admire this one. We have the fucking centaur. Yeah, so we finally got to the centaur. So it's a centaur with, uh... Oh, my leg went to sleep. But, um... Yeah, look at that shit. He's standing on, like, a little rock. I love the little galaxy in the background, honestly. That shit looks awesome. Alright, let's see here. I got a job right out of art school at Walt Disney Studios as a, as a special effects matte artist under Harrison Inshaw's direction. Matte painting is an optical process that combines painting and live action film. Okay, okay, that, that, that sounds badass as hell, actually, shit. Then you have, uh... Let's see here, we got these little guys. They look like they may be some type of enlightened beings, you know, they're like solid white eyes and mouth and shit, so everything they spew should be pure, you know? At least that's my interpretation of that in a way. I'm guessing they're pure beings, I don't know. A decade ago, I saw a retrospective of the work of American artist Grant Wood at the Whitney Museum, which featured the original of his greatest painting, the American Gothic. Oh, that's the fucking farmer, in it? Oh, shit. Okay, that's fucking cool. I didn't even realize that was the fucking farmer and shit. Here we have a... Oh, we have that same scene of the wizard, but this is a woman now, and here's the souls again. But these are different souls, it looks like. And she's, like, casting them out, and she's in Paris and shit. That's fucking awesome. Who's in Paris? The wizards are in Paris. <laughs> fucking, I love that. Fucking, when I first turned in this cover... There was no red bodence on the woman's chest. The publisher asked me to cover the offending bits, which I wasn't happy about. <laughs> I did the corrections on a piece of sketchy architect so they could be removed once the cover was shot. Ironically, I have grown to prefer the more tasteful version. Hell yeah. Here is two lovers looking at a big ass castle kind of thing in the distance. Fucking fantasy castles like that, man. They're just fucking... Something about them are just awesome as hell. Like, I love seeing shit like that. My roommate in college was Paul Chadwick, who went on to create, write, and draw the marvelous comic book, Concrete. We are still close friends, and I have stayed in touch with the comics field through him. I have many friends who are artists and find them in constant sources, support, and create... Create, get... Creative, give, and take. Okay, okay. I can't read for some reason. <laughs> Here we have a New York kind of build, like New York kind of city being like bombed or it was destroyed or something. An aggra aggravating problem for the digital artist is what you see on the computer monitor is not necessarily what you get from the output. Color is very inconsistent and every output device has a different calibration. Getting consistent color from every device is one of the hurdles of art, or computer art. Yeah, you're not wrong, hell fucking... All the colors and shit, and they're all different and shit. So fucking, he's definitely he he got a point there, fucking. But here we have a caveman, and he's just he just crashed, and there's dinosaur or someone just crashed and there's caveman. Oh, I like actually. Ha oh wait, hang on, look at that. They might uh, I find these kind of connect. Look at that. Um, yeah, that all oh, they do connect. Hang on, hang on. Is there another one? Oh my god, hang on. We're, do we're looking at both of these together. Fuck that. Look at that shit. They fucking connect. Dude, that's badass. Oh my god. What the hell? Yeah, they connect. Oh my god, that's fucking cool. Oh, dude, that's so fucking sick. Oh my god, I fucking love that. Oh my god, dude. I love shit that connects like that. Oh my god. Dude, that's so fucking cool. The day I was chastised, the day I was Christianed, David Boris Mattingly, a rich heritage of names given to me, I was David, I was named David after painter Jacques Lewis David and Boris after Edward, Edgar Rice Burries. It seems almost inevitable that I would become a science fiction illustrator. True, true, true. And then hell, we just saw this one, so let's see here. 
having loved Burr's book since childhood, I wanted to do something special for the series. I designed the six paintings to fit together side by side from one vast pattern. Oh my god, they all go side by no fucking shot. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang the fuck on, hang on, give me a minute. Hang on. We're, okay, we're gonna we're gonna skim the, we're gonna I'm gonna let y'all read the backs real quick. And then uh, we're putting these motherfuckers together. Hell yeah, we are putting these motherfuckers together. Uh here yeah, we, yeah, we're about to look at this shit. Hang on, give me a minute. Here's the back of this one. And then here's the back of this one. Oh, bro, that's gonna be badass as hell. Hang on, give me a minute. Oh, bro, oh, bro, I fucking, oh, my God, hang on. Hang on, hang the hell on. <laughs> oh, my God, hang on. Okay, so the last six, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, the last six, okay. So, apparently, side by side... Doing? Jesus fucking Christ, but fucking oh my god, dude, that's oh my god, it does. Oh my god. Oh damn, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'll be able to. I, I'm gonna okay, I'm definitely gonna have to put a fucking picture of this up at the end. Oh my god, or make this a thumbnail or something, dude. That's so fucking cool. Oh my god, dude, it it, it makes the full panoramic. Dude, that's so badass. Oh, dude, that's actually... Hang on, let me move this up. It makes the full fucking panoramic. Oh, my God, dude. That's so fucking cool. Okay, look. Hands down, this is probably my favorite little set. That's cool as shit, and I don't care, I don't care who you are. That is cool as fuck, and that is awesome as hell. And I, I was not expecting a fucking panoramic art in the fucking cards, okay? Like, that is fucking sick as hell, and I fucking love that so fucking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put the panorama in the fucking, uh, in the in the thumbnail, man. That's gonna, that, that's gonna have to go in there. Fuck it. <laughs> There's no way in hell about it. Fucking, I'm gonna have to put that in there. Oh my god. But here's the, uh, the now we're going to the second half. So we have a boy floating in space, and the world's being contorted around him. I will experiment with any compositional device that might make a cover stand out from the pack, which is, after all, what a cover is supposed to do. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Oh, but bro, that was fucking cool. So here we have that planet, in a way, but different as well. So we have the two planets sticking, sticking together, a shooting star, the galaxies and shit. That's kind of cool. I like that, actually. Hell yeah, shit. This is the Extraordinary Series by Robert L. Ford, a computer-generated cover. Okay, okay. Here we have a spaceship with some aliens and shit, and they're, oh, they're still at the planet. Okay, okay, that's cool as hell. I painted this cover as though it was seen through a fish eyes lens, or through the eyes of an alien at the foreground. So here we have a, um, spaceship going down to that planet. I think the quality of science fiction illustration today is the best it has ever been. Some of the artists I watch for include Paul Alexander, Steve Hickman, and a, 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 a fucking bunch of people. Goddamn, Jesus. Fucking. Oh, hang on. My damn fucking leg went to sleep. Oh, shit. Oh. Damn. That hurt. <laughs> but fucking. Oof. Oh, shit. Hang on. Oof. Oh, that really went to sleep. Mmm. Sitting down this damn chair so damn long to put my fucking lid to sleep. Mm. Damn, that didn't feel too good. But uh, hang on, let's, let's let's half this one as well. That was a little bit easier to hold. But um, we have this purple ass card and a bunch of bubbles with the same painting over and over, but different colors. Oh, it's one of those types of paintings, dude. That's fucking cool as hell. I can't remember what the fuck they're called, but I know what it is. This is based on a painting I did sev several years ago, which I recently scanned into my computer and subconsciously reworked. Okay, okay, shit. That's cool as hell. Here is the spaceship. Bro, that's a cool-ass looking spaceship, though, honestly. Fucking... This painting has an interesting perspective solution that mixes different vanishing points. 
I have found that a good way to make spaceships look big is to choose a flat set of vanishing points. Yeah, that's true. Huh? Here we have a space woman with space armor. That armor looks like it is completely uncomfortable. We'll be dead ass real with you. And then we have the planets. More people in the background flying. She has a jetpack as well. And then like some more planets and shit. Even as a child, I was a night owl. My most productive hours are often after dinner. Or are, are, uh, are after dinner. When the world is quieter and there are a few interruptions. Honestly, I feel that. I fucking... Yeah, that's, that's usually when I record my videos sometimes. It's fucking... One, two, three, four, five in the morning. <laughs> it's just it's just a nice quiet time, you know, fucking but check this out. Okay, so we have Okay, we got two people in a spaceship. Looks like it's about to kill them though, hell fucking that's cool as fuck though, I like it. I wonder if there's any more of the panoramas that we done seen, because that was fucking cool. But yeah, I'm de I'm definitely putting the panorama as the uh in the thumbnail somewhere i use my life and everything that happens as a source of material for my paintings okay okay that's fucking cool i love artists like that that's just like you know like musicians and shit like that like artists who paint shit from their lives and musicians like musicians who talk about shit from their life and shit like i, I, I like i like art like that you know here we have two people in spacesuits and then one of the little spaceships my art school, Art Center College of Design, produced many of today's fine illustrators. Some people I know from school are Jen Gurry of Dinotopia fame. Many of us lived in the Golden Ponds apartments. Huh. Neat. And then here we have that guy from earlier, it looks like. And then this is a cool ass looking. Kind of one of them little roulette, or not roulette, but them little fucking spinny wheel things. But fucking yeah, he painted a bunch of different scenes into the bubbles too. Like, like hell, even that one has a fucking scene in it. Like, you see that shit? Like, you know the time and the patience it took for that shit? Like, um, I've done a painting like that before where, uh, I had a bunch of little fucking details and shit like this. Like, it was, um, I forgot what it was. It was, um, it was, I think it was something I did in school years ago. It was, uh, fuck, I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was like, uh, I did, uh, like, I had, uh, I did it like this. I'm breaking the little circles and shit. And, like, each one was, like, uh, it connected to a different person. And then, like, uh, I put, like, different shit for each person. But, like, uh, there would be, like, little windows here that, like, had details in them and shit. Like, I fucking love doing that in paintings. And to see that, man, that's just fucking awesome. I love paintings. I love paintings like that. The hardest stage of any painting is getting a good idea. I typically spend about half my time working on the rough sketches and the other half rendering the final painting. I am sometimes tempted to shortcut the idea stage, but I remind myself that's a bad idea. Hell yeah, you always gotta have the fucking ideas. <laughs> Here we have some spaceships and shit bombing what looks like a planet. Okay, okay. These spaceships owe something to the work of John Harris. He's an unusual impressionistic approach to his spacecraft okay 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 check this one out this is like this one looks like it's underwater almost i fucking love that look how big that damn thing is dude i will occasionally experiment with other mediums and i did this painting in casein colors that were popular before the advert the advent of acrylics it has some of the properties of gochi and some uh some of oils in that it can be blended and has a slower drying time Ooh, check this out. Fucking. That is a cool ass looking fucking set of ships. Honestly, look at that shit. Fucking. And the, what are they? On a lava planet or something? Or they're near the sun. I, I can't tell which one, but it looks like they're near the sun. This was done a 3D computer program. All the ships, spears, and planets were built as 3D forms and then mapped with paintings. It's a lot of work getting everything built and properly mapped. I think it's cool as fuck that he uh, he does all these with the computer and shit too, like fucking like, that's awesome as hell to me. Like he he draws them out and shit and then fucking puts them on the computer. And then here you have this cube getting took up and the spaceships are they building something? I don't know. That's what it looks like. 
This is the cover for a Frederick Pohl book in which New York City resides under a dome and it's uh it's all computer generated using a mixture of techniques, the repair ships, dome and jet. Oh I was right, repair ships. Okay, hell yeah, okay, fuck. I ain't even ever seen these cars and I'm getting this shit right. <laughs> uh, hell. I mean hell, I mean I don't even got really gotta guess. I mean hell, he's really good at fucking Oh my foot's asleep. Oh, that hurts. Oh, hang on, shit. Oh, it's asleep and it's fucking cramping. Oof. Oh, fucking Christ. Oh. Ow. God damn, that did not feel good. Ooh, y'all ever have some bullshit like that? Oh, dude, like the fucking. Ooh. God damn. Damn, that did not feel good. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> like, ow. The s my foot went to sleep. And on the side of my foot, it cramped. Like, it started to cramp, like, up under my fucking big toe. Oh, my God, that fucking hurt. <laughs> Oof. Okay, holy shit. Oh, okay, enough of that. Let's get back to the fucking cards. Ow. Okay, check that out. Some meteors and a spaceship and shit. Oh, that fucking hurt. That still hurts. Fuck. <laughs> but I like that, though. Look at this, though. The meteors and shit. Like, it looks like little homes and shit. I like that. I, have, I love to paint spaceships and have more. I have tried many different approaches, but this one uses asymmetry to make the ship appear larger. Okay, okay. Oh, we got a little plan. Oh, we got some. Okay, so the, now they go to the side. Okay, okay. Shit, let's go. Hey, check that out. You got fucking these people. Uh, are they studying these people? I ain't sure, but that's what it looks like to me is they're studying them. The back of each of these cards features an unused color sketch. Oh, that's what those are. Okay, the back of each of these cards features an unused color sketch. For the published painting on the front. Okay, so I was right. Okay, shit. That he, uh, that they're, uh, that, okay, so I was right. The The front of the card is the painting that he did, and the back are just, like, little sketches and shit. Okay, I like that. That's actually kind of badass. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, here we have three people jumping on some type of moon or something with rocks, and then you have a bunch of little planets in the background. I love how they're all the same color. <laughs> There's an old saying I love that goes, butter towards the edges, enough gets it in the middle. Enough gets in the middle anyway. I want to look for the uh, unobvious solution. Yeah, hell, I mean, that's, that makes the best solutions. Ooh, check this one out. That planet, that little, uh, uh, that, that asteroid is blowing up. This planet has a fucking, that's not even a planet, it's just a big ass city with a fucking space bubble around it so they can breathe. That's fucking cool as shit. <laughs> hey, hang on, wait a minute. Is this co does this continue with uh, the others? Nah, that's the same colors though, so it's definitely, definitely continues on to something. Hell, fucking, I fucking love that. I love that some of these are sideways too, though. I, I, that's even better. I painted this for the classic by James Blish right after I got back from working on Warren's Betty's Warren Betty's Dick Tracy. I hope I help paint the stylized cityscapes on that film. Oh, that's badass. Like I, I like learning about shit like this. Like, that, like, that, like this shit, this is cool as fuck. Like, you can't really learn about shit like that, you know, unless you like talk to him yourself and shit. You know. Here's that same spaceship from the other card. Kind of zooming through the dam. The galaxy and shit and fucking... I like that, though. Oh, yeah, dude. I like that these are sideways, too. I fucking... Oh, I love them. Landscape, you know? While trying to come up with an idea for an assignment, I would do scores of rough thumbnail sketches. These quick and dirty layouts give me a chance to try out lots of different concepts. You know, honestly, I really... I really feel like painting, you know? Uh... And drawing and shit. Like, if y'all would like to see a video like that, like, uh, like, I don't know, me drawing random characters until we fill up a fucking 
a page or something, you know, let me let me know like down below if you want to. Like I'll happily do it, and y'all can give me like little ideas and shit. Like if you want to see like a green alien with five eyes or some shit, you know, we'll try to draw them out and like we'll do like a little. Like we could do like a little line and just keep it going all the way to the top and fill them up, you know. If y'all want to do that, let me know. I mean, I'll I'll happily <laughs> I'll happily start drawing some shit for real. Hell, fucking, I've been wanting to draw some shit again anyway. Hell, so fucking, and I love drawing shit like that and shit like this all the time too. Hell, I mean, that'd be badass as hell. But fucking, here we have the planets. We have an old man, a robot, a toaster dog, little robot walkers. Uh, a car, a big ass spaceship. I modeled the distinguished older man after Peter Ellenshaw, an amazing landscape artist, one of the greatest model artists of all time. Ooh, check this one out. A pyramid with a fucking beam coming up and then like a fucking a cool ass looking city. That's a cool that that's a cool looking fucking city. I like that I like that it's got a little fucking blimp there too. Many art directors avoid green because they say it's an off-putting color that people won't buy. I wonder about this premise if most other covers stay away from green and then one book comes out in a bright green color scheme. Hell, I, I, man, I fucking love greens. <laughs> Check that out, though. Oh, my God. The fucking lightning and shit hitting the planet and the fucking space and shit. Bro, that's fucking cool as hell looking. Oh, my God. Holy shit. This is my first computer aided cover. The entire background is computer assembled using altered photos of Earth and the Moon. The energy patterns were generated as abstract forms and then distorted. Oh, that's fucking cool. Oh, check this out. You got little you got two like you got some reptilian aliens fucking coming for Earth. Oh, that's fucking cool as shit. And then they you know, they got their little spaceship in the back and shit. Is that a fucking samurai? Oh my god, it's a samurai. Oh my god, that's awesome. Hang on. The painting won magazine and booksellers award for one of the best covers of the year. I know I shouldn't pay any attention to awards. I feel strongly as George Scott once said, the artist should contribute, not compete. Hell yeah. Check that out. A fucking space samurai, bro. Oh my fucking god, that's awesome. He cut one of the fucking reptiles open. Dude, that's so fucking cool, man. I fucking... I, I want to see a fucking little... I want to see, like, a full cover photo of the fucking samurai, honestly. <laughs> Most parts of any science fiction painting can be modeled, but I shoot models for whatever elements I can. Check this out. Hey, you got the fucking... The planets and shit. Ooh, check that one. I like that little planet. Oh, he did it. He, he did this one kind of like he did the other ones. Look, like, even the fucking small ones in the background. I don't know if you ever see that or not, but they, they each... They're, they're each a different color... And they each, uh, I don't know if he, like, zoomed in or what the hell he did on it, but fucking, that's cool as shit. I love paintings like that so much. Artist Thomas Kidd painted covers for the real-time books before me, and I liked what he did so much, I put a little spirified versions of his covers on mine to sign the painting David T.K. Mattingly. Oh, the book, the spears can freeze time for everything inside of them, and people using them to travel across space and time. Oh, so he put, he, he put that dude's paintings into his... Oh, that's fucking cool, actually. Holy shit, that's awesome. Like a little nod. Okay, I like that. Okay, so here we have uh, helicopters and airplanes and missiles shooting off. And it looks like some type of war zone, really. Yeah, fucking jets. Damn. They are fucking fighting for something. The shuttle attack, yeah. <laughs> I view a good cover as a collaboration with the author. And I always read the books I illustrate. I want my covers to be as true to the narrative as possible. I will sometimes combine scenes and elements, but I won't put something in a painting that isn't in the story. Unless specifically instructed to by the editor or art director. See, I love shit like that. Like, fucking, like, if you're gonna paint a cover for a book or something, you have to read the book. Because, I mean, like, I could fucking, you can get a book called, I don't know, The Centaur Kills People, you know? And then you put a fucking... A centaur on the front, but, you know, turns out, lo and behold, the fucking centaur kills people is like a fucking, it's not even a real centaur, nothing like that, it has nothing to do with a fucking centaur, or even killing, that's just the title of the book, you know what I'm saying, like, you, you gotta read what you, you're drawing, you know what I'm saying, but fuck, oh, they look like Doctor, he looks like Doctor Strange, oh my god, <laughs> that's so fucking funny looking, I love that, 
Some of my best ideas come from I'm relaxed and not concentrating on the project at hand. I would spend all day working on sketches for a project that and not come with anything I like. But the moment I get in bed and close my eyes, suddenly I do will come to me forward. This has happened so many times that I keep a pad and pencil beside the bed. <laughs> I don't even fucking blame him, honestly. Here we have the ship falling out of orbit after being attacked. And then you have the shuttle coming in for rescue. Doing wraparound covers is an interesting challenge. They must be composed in a completely unnatural way. With the main subject on the lower middle right side and nothing of importance on the back since it is inevitably to be covered with type. Okay. okay. So here we have some guy and a woman. And he has the fucking the one ring of Mordor. Goddamn, that's what it looks like. And there's like a hundred goddamn helicopters behind him. Jesus, and he got a group of little people behind him. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. The Messiah Stone. I painted this for a book of Martin Caden after seeing an exhibition of Maury sculpture at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I was especially struck by the huge gateway arch or Wohara shaped like a man. Oh, okay, okay, shit. I hear you have lasers shooting through. No, they're not shooting through. They're flying towards that thing. And uh, <laughs> once again, all the yeah, they're, these are the same colors, just ba a different fucking like they're turned sideways. Like this one's turned down. This one's sitting up. That one's turned. Like, it's like inverted. I, <laughs> I fucking love that. That's awesome. Fucking. I don't even think he 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 knew people could be able to tell that shit. But I, I, I fucking love that. The cover is a homage to Robert McCall, the most spiritual of all space artists. McCall's work expresses the grandness of possibility of space. Okay, okay, shit. Oh, check that out. Oh, look at that motherfucker. He having the time of his life on the little fucking thing. That's so fucking cool, though. Look at that shit. I want one of those so fucking bad. I would drive on them bitches all the damn time. I have sold rights to this painting many times over the years, but uh, the most unusual sell was to the filmmaker Roger Corman, who optioned it as the core inspiration for a film. Although he commissioned several screenplays written around it, none of it went into production. It's too bad. I would love to see this painting come to life. Hell yeah, shit. Here we have, what is that, Frankenstein? That's, that's definitely Frankenstein. That's the, uh, what's that little fucking green... The lagoon, the, the the lagoon monster or whatever. And then you have uh, I love how even that little motherfucker way in the back has detail, like that, like that's so fucking cool, dude. He had even that little guy has detail. Fucking my first assignment was from the late Don Walhelm, Walhelm at Doll Books, who gave many artists their start. There's too few markets today that would give a new cover an opportunity. Hell yeah, fucking. Here, the, here we have like a James Bond kind of Han Solo mix. And he's a uh, laser grid, no entry, the robot and shit. Even though I am set up to shoot models at my studio, I often work with Ad, Addy Passian, an outstanding photographer in Manhattan who specializes in shooting references for illustrators. Okay, okay, so that's those. So then we move on to the final small little bit and then this will be all of them. We have a fucking Wendigo. Goddamn Wendigo right there just fucking watching. <laughs> a fucking man and woman at the campfire. I like to listen to books on tape while I am rendering the final painting. I can only listen to music or science while I am coming up with ideas because that involves the intellectual side of the brain. When I do the actual painting, listening to an engrossing book distracts the cerebral part of my brain and lets the artistic side take over. Okay, I never thought of doing that. That's actually kind of cool shit. You got some Robin Hood looking knights, and then the guy's hopping out of the spaceship with a big ass dog. Okay, they're about to light him up with the bow, though. This painting was inspired by the Brandywine School of Artists, including Howard Powell, Maxfield Parrish, and a bunch of other fucking people. <laughs> fucking. Here we have Space Conan, and he's uh, sitting on a fucking throne, and there's like a dead person at his feet. Kind of looks like Space Zeus in a way, but fucking... I say Space Conan just because he he looks like Conan the Barbarian in a way. At least to me. And oh my god, is this another one of those fucking... No, it's not. Fuck. Oh my god, I, thought, I got so happy for a minute. Of the roughly 500 professional book covers I have done, this is my favorite. Okay, okay, shit. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, damn, I, I really thought it, I, I really thought they had another fucking panorama for a minute, bro. I was about to get so fucking excited. I was about to be so fucking happy. Oh my god, y'all don't even understand. I was actually gonna get, I was gonna be so fucking happy. I was about to move all the fucking cards again and fucking, <laughs> like I was gonna set this shit up to where I could fucking, I could do the damn panorama. <laughs> but here we go. And my fucking leg keeps going to sleep. But we have, what is that, Bigfoot? A uh, fucking fly. Oh, it looks like a bunch of horror icons. Okay, Frank, the wife of Frankenstein, Igor, or the no, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I can check that out, though. Models can sometimes be pretty stiff, but I follow the advice of Norman Rockwell. Gave in on how to the right emotion from the model. Okay, okay. Here's this one. Fucking the... The Athenian soldiers. Yeah, these are like Athenian soldiers or Spartans. Yeah, they... I don't know, hell. It looks like both of them, really. Like, a mix of them. Which I think is fucking badass as hell, honestly. I fucking love Greece and shit. Oh, look. They they made the same... Damn, he did the same shit just changed it. Oh, I like that. Hell yeah, I like that. That's fucking cool. This was the cover for a part of an extraordinary series by Paul and Karen Anderson. It was a very long men manuscript, about 250... Damn, 200, I mean, fucking hell, 2,500 pages among the four books. Damn. And then here's this one. She's, uh, hang on, this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's like a little gateway opening it up. She's standing on the little, okay, okay, hell yeah, these look fucking awesome. The Roman Mater, okay, so I was right, Roman, okay, fucking hell yeah, I was right. The model for this cover is my ex-wife, Barbara, oof. She hated the pose for some reason, which was one of the reasons we got divorced. All kidding aside, being the wife of an illustrator can be tough. With the deadlines and late nights, I try to remember that life is not all painting and personal relationships with time and effort, too. Hell yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. Hell fucking, he had his ex-wife in that shit. This guy looks like fucking Thanos over here in the fucking distance. Then you have Spaceman fighting a fucking space dragon. Fucking space wizard again, that's fucking cool as shit. The Wizard World. Okay, we're on Wizard World. Okay. The big head of the wizard in the painting is a portrait of my father, <laughs> who is both an inventor and a scientist. I see him as a wizard who supported me through art school and made it possible for me to become who I am today. Okay, here, here's some wizards battling the dragons and they're fucking blowing up the city and shit. Hell yeah, I fucking think that's cool as fuck. I use some airbrush in my work. I paint mostly on in acrylic and a traditionally hard edge medium. And the airbrushes let me soften edges and do gentle. Check that out. He's shooting down the fucking... Is he shooting down the ship or the fucking big ship? I don't even know. Hell, fuck. I love that this ship connects to a bunch of these fucking panties. I think that's fucking awesome. That looks like what's his fucking name. That guy off of fucking Star Trek. But um, this is my allegory of mankind's endless quest to explore the unknown. Diana the Huntress is shooting an arrow. Which becomes a shuttle... Which leads to a space station. And eventually the star is space in the final frontier. Hold on, what? Okay, so she shot the... Oh my god, he's right. It Fucking, he shot it. It becomes a shuttle and becomes a spaceship. Oh, that's so fucking cool. Oh my god, I didn't even fucking notice that at first. Hey, this looks like that guy off of uh, Star Trek. I can't remember his damn name, though. I wanted to communicate how it would feel to be telepathic. In this painting, it was done in the computer by altering the duplicate of the head of the telepath. I originally generated the wild background without the heads as it was a standalone piece. Oh, okay, okay. So he used the background from a... Okay, okay, I like that. Hell yeah. Okay, so we got monsters again. So there's Bigfoot, a bunch of demons and skulls, and here's a fucking knight-looking demon. Damn, that's terrifying as fuck looking, honestly. This story takes place in the dimension where the stories of Edgar Allan Poe come to life. To prepare for this cover, I reread Poe's classics and included motifs from some of them. This has the Inquisitor, the Pit and the Pendulum, the Raven, the Orangutan from the Mur Murderers in the Rue Morogue. Damn, that's pretty cool shit. He used uh, a bunch of the fucking books and shit. Okay. We have some uh, space cadets returning home and shit from their... Space exploits of colonizing planets, probably. <laughs> it's 
fucking, I have learned a lot from the comic book artist Joe Kubert. I think he's the best storyteller in the field. Not bad. Okay, so we have a naked woman with the clouds dancing around her. And the fucking planet, it looks like a thermal, like a, like a thermal planet in a way. Like they're looking at it through thermals, if that makes any sense. One drawback to working on the computer is that no actual painting is produced, only a digital file. That is a downside, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. Fuck it. I'd be painting the hell out of these shits. The little heliard. Okay, so I'm assuming this is some type of hell. Yeah, there's the fucking Grim Reaper River Sticks kind of thing, and then they're beating the shit out of that guy up there. Damn, that dude's definitely in fucking hell. Uh, my beautiful wife, Kathleen, appears in a lot in my paintings. Albeit sometimes in an altered form, this portrait of her is my favorite. She is the dark-haired woman on the right peeking out from behind the book. Uh, her? Yeah, that's the right of the book, so her? Or, no, that's a cat. Yeah, that's her cat. Okay, hell yeah, that's fucking cool. Okay, I like that. I like that he includes his wife and shit. And now we have the final card, which shows off the name of all the cards we've done seen today. Because so I forgot to read a lot of the names. <laughs> and then, yeah, the only thing we're missing is the five metallic cards. But, I, I could probably find those literally somewhere, and you know. <laughs> but, damn, I hope y'all have enjoyed going through these cards with me. Because I fucking, I love going through fantasy cards. And I really hope y'all enjoyed going through these with me. Because this, this was fucking awesome. And yeah, I <laughs> I hope y'all have enjoyed. And y'all let me know if y'all want to see the art thing for real or not. And if y'all do, let me know what kind of, uh, like, give me some ideas for a character to draw. You know, like, you know, he'd be like a long, purple, fucking, I don't know, cat this looking alien, you know. Just give me something. Give me some characters to draw, you know. That'd be fun as hell. But uh, yeah, I hope y'all have enjoyed. Hell, y'all be safe and y'all have fun. I will catch y'all on the next one. See you then.